Do you have anything to weigh in on it, Filthy? No, I have no idea. No, no knowledge of any of the facts of that. So that that didn't stop me. (laughs) (laughs) And we're live. What'd you do, Taylor? Well, mine has something to do with uh, gas as well, except Mm. it's in the modern day. So mine is about uh, Bashar al-Assad, who is the leader of Syria. Uh, the elected leader of Syria. And the reason that it jumped out to me is we all know how divisive the media is and how much like Fox and MSNBC hate each other. Like it's rare that a story will break and that everyone will be on the same page without fail. Every single time uh, Syria comes up, people on the left, people on the, or rather news sources on the left, news sources on the right, they all are like, hinting at the idea that we need to get more involved in Syria. We need to have more troops over there. It's not so much a yes versus no. It's a to what extent, you know, Mm -hmm. conversation of do we need this many or this many? Who knows? But we definitely need a lot of people over there. And the reason it seems odd is you have to look at the timing and know the context of what's going on over there. So basically in Syria, there's a civil war going on between Assad's forces, the, the forces of Syria, and the quote-unquote moderate rebels that the U.S. and Israel and Western powers uh, pump up with those brand new Toyotas and guns and you know pallets of money to allow them the ability to fight back semi-effectively against uh, Assad's you know pro-army forces. And so this has been going on for a while. And these uh, quote-unquote moderate rebels, which are not moderate at all, we call them moderate rebels because it sounds more palatable in the media. These are Wahhabi. Uh, Muslims, and those are the actual, like, Wahhabi Muslims are the ones that regular Muslims are like, oh, no, 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 thank you. Like, they're the extremist, you know, cut your fingers off, shoot you in a line, like, like, basically just an angry dog that can be wielded by a stronger power and turned against. They're the Mormons. The, the Mormons, sure. And every time the civil, so the civil war now, and for years, has been going back and forth, but it's always been on the Assad's side for the most part. He's winning against these moderate rebels. And every time the war starts to turn down, uh, it happened under Obama, happened under Trump, uh, they're like, oh, there's a gas attack. There's a gas attack. And they go, well, that, the line has been crossed. We got to uh, send more troops there. We got to lay the hammer down. And my uh, contention is that the reason that these gas attacks happen at these specific times is because they know that the moderate rebels are losing to Assad. They want to destroy Assad and have a power replacement there. And so they need any excuse at all to get the U.S. or Israeli or any real military's air force, because Al-Qaeda, ISIS, they don't have air forces. They're going to get trounced by real air forces. And so the U.S., these Western powers, want to be able to go in, do some real fucking damage to Assad's army, and then back off and let uh, these moderate rebels go in and cr- create havoc and and destroy this place. And what people don't know is, you know, Assad is is popular with his people, and he's uh, even among uh, you know they paint him as this like crazy madman, which Woody and I uh, we, on the show we talked about it before. You know, oh, this previously rational actor who did things in their self interest. Uh, what they're doing this now? He's gassing his own people when he's winning the civil war. Well, it's just madman. Don't look any further into it, madman. Don't think about it. We got to do this. Uh, but every time the t- tide starts to turn, a, a gas attack or something like that happens in a totally non-strategic way, and they use that as rationale to funnel more money, more arms, more trucks to these moderate rebels to fight against Assad. Uh, in addition to that, you have to think about the context of the war and what Assad would have to gain from these gas attacks. So Assad is winning. What does a guy who's winning, who is popular with his people, and this most recent gas attack was during an EU inspection. <laughs> the EU was there to confirm that he didn't have any more gas. And as they were there, they go, gas attack, gas attack. You know, 70 uh, people died over here. Was it a strategic area that he needed to hold? Was it something that he there was any incentive whatsoever to do? Was Assad going, man, this civil war is going so well. I'm going to take on the U.S. Yeah, I'm going to take on the U.S. and Israel, you know, two of the most powerful militaries in the world. I'm going to take them on. Like, no, there's no incentive for him to do that at all. Uh, Even the way that they cover it, you can tell that it's partially BS. You have the white helmets that you hear about, which are really just the PR, you know, front-facing arm of al-Qaeda. They're not the good guys. Uh, Those white helmets, there are footage of them, you know, cleaning up the wreckage of this gas attack. And you see all these bodies laying out that were apparently just you know, uh, in the process of being killed by gas. You know, some people are dead, some people are still twitching, and they're walking around in their white helmets with, like, T-shirts and shorts on, 
touching these people, like moving them, picking them up. You know what you don't do when there's a gas attack? Is you don't gallivant in there with your shorts on and start touching things. You don't do that. You're going to die. Like it, it's, Gas isn't like movies where it's like, oh, is that last wisp of smoke out of the air? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm fine. No, that's lingering. That's there. You walk into that area way later, you're going to be in some serious shit. And so these, these, I think it's false flag of Western powers, namely the U.S. and Israel, who think that it is greatly advantageous to them to destabilize the Middle East and make themselves a stronger presence. And over and over and over and over, you see that it just doesn't add up. It does not make any sense at all for Assad to be doing what he does over there. He, he is not this, uh, and, and even, even then, like, and it's not even pumping up Assad like he's some great dude, but he's way better than those moderate rebels who the people who live in Syria are fucking terrified of. The people in those, in those cities are, are normal. They're not Wahhabi Muslims. Those Wahhabi Muslims hate those Muslims just as much as they want to kill the Christians. You know, Assad protects the minorities in these cities for the most part. He uses his army to make sure that they can't go in and start slaughtering the, the minority Christians or the, the uh, normal Muslims. So that one really jumped out to me. And the more I read about it, unlike Kyle, I actually do think this makes a lot of sense. And I, I looked at like a lot of different news sites and I started to notice the pattern of no critical analysis. It's a foregone conclusion that it is Assad. A gas attack, it's Assad. How do you know? Because there's footage right here of uh, ISIS soldiers with gas cans that have Turkish lettering on it that they somehow came across. Like, it's not, it's clearly fucking these moderate rebels realizing, oh man, we're losing. And if we give uh, that quote red line excuse to the Western powers of US and Israel, then we're going to get more supplies. We're going to have a much better shot at winning this thing. And so it, it just does not add up one bit the way that the media covers it and the rationale of, of Assad to do these, these atrocities. It's also interesting that Iran is, of course, bordered with Russia. One more. And, and Assad is allied with Putin. So it just gives us even more reason to knock him out and put our own puppet in, eh? Yeah, uh, it it well from from that point of view, yes. Yeah, I, I buy into that. I, I I so so I wouldn't think that the U.S. would would have dirty hands in in that, but I do. I could definitely see us being complicit in it, allowing that, it to that's happen. That's why we, or even, we fuel the moderate rebels. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's known. Oh no, we do. Yes, of course. I, I've seen this uh, this graph that shows all of the groups that are fighting in Syria and how each of them are allied amongst one another. And it's a literal spider web diagram where, where there are curved lines connecting all of the groups. And this group is opposed to this group. And this group is mm -hmm. allied with that group. And like, it, it's absurd. It's so complicated. It's almost impossible. Because the follow. Saudis are there as well. The Saudis are the, the, the Saudis have people there. There, there are mercenaries from all around the fucking globe there. Rep that are representing a, yeah. a dozen different countries and, and, and groups of countries, right? It's, it's a very and, complicated thing. And you have to thing. remember, these are the same people who told us there were WMDs in Iraq confirmed. These are the same people who told you, oh, yeah, anthrax, that's all coming from Iraq. That, that's where it's coming from. They've got, like, factories and shit there. So it's not like there's not a precedent to, to lay this on, you know? It's, there is a pattern of lying to the people, lying and implying, and seizing that foregone conclusion thing. Because if every mainstream media outlet is agreeing that it's Assad, most people are going to go, eh, must be. They're not going to look into it and see, wait, what? He's winning this war handily, and he gasses his own people, but he's still popular with them for the most part? Like, it, it doesn't add up. Like, in this most recent one, it happened so soon after Trump had his, like, you know, speech or whatever, where he's like, we're going to get out of Syria as soon as we can. We're getting out of there. And then, lo and behold, you know, a little, a little gas attack that doesn't make any tactical sense happens to try and, you know, make sure that that's not a possibility. It just, it does not add up. It doesn't. Yeah, I'll co-sign with that. There it is. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> I won! Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was afraid to agree with mine. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. Lefty's been yeah. sending me swastika emojis this <laughs> whole time. Well, the difference is I actually do believe mine. I think that it makes a lot of sense. Do you have anything to weigh in on it, Filthy? No, I have no idea. No, no knowledge of any of the facts of that. So, 
that, that didn't stop me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>